Okay, let's do some static checks on the charging system of the CX500 Custom. We don't have the engine running yet and we've got a dead battery, but there are some things that we can learn. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. So first things first, battery, I saw, yeah, two volts, that is not going to cut it, got to get you out. Not sure why the cardboard shim seems to me like that was a good fit without it. No clue. Bye bye cardboard shim. Kind of a shame this looks like it was a brand new battery um, that the previous owner had put in for the sale of the bike because the box for it was in the top case and uh, it's dead now, but that's from storage in my brother's place without putting a tender on it. So, you know, it's too bad. We'll have to order a new battery. It'll probably be 50, 60 bucks. I believe I just figured out why the shim. This nut is not the correct threads for uh, this bolt on here, this stud. That or they're damaged, but uh, I'll check the threads on these. This looks like, oh, those are definitely a different thread. So they didn't get the, the nut on all the way and they needed to shim it to keep it tight. So the things you discover with a used motorcycle. So this is a good opportunity to show how I figure out what is the right nut for this. First thing, I just measure the diameter here. 5.87, so that's a six mil stud. And the thread pitch, you gotta get, these are so cheap on eBay. It's a thread pitch gauge. Get one, I'm gonna say 1.0. Yeah, six mil by 1.0 thread. Now I know what nut to grab. Okay, so uh, dead battery, obviously, with this bike. Pulled the dead battery out. I have some jumper cables hooked up to the battery terminals. Those cables go to a different sized motorcycle battery that is okay, not great. Uh, so I've got another set of alligator clips going from there in parallel down to a you know emergency jumper battery. So I'm thinking between the two of these, uh, I'm probably simulating a good battery and uh, you know I don't think I'm gonna get this thing started but I would like to turn it over and just see uh, you know if the starter really turns fast or maybe I've got a starter issue that needs to be uh, addressed and uh, we'll see if by some miracle I get it running and I really doubt it again with the bad gas and these carbs sitting as long as they have without running um, but, hey, if it runs, then we'll be able to do a full charging system check here. But we'll, we'll do what we can. So first things first, let's see what we've got here now at the battery, so to speak. Well, I've got to get a good connection here. 12, 12 and a half volts. Let's try turning it over. If you like motorcycles, custom builds, or just like a good story about a man's three-year effort to build a tribute to his childhood teacher, get a copy of Creating Mr. Corton. In it, 
you'll learn how this man changed this man for the better. How this man took this and built this. How these guys became lifelong friends and enthusiasts of motorcycling and craftsmanship. And how the name Urban Monk originated. It's available from Amazon anywhere in the world that Amazon ships in both paperback and ebook, or you can purchase through a link found on urbanmonktv.com. Get your copy of Creating Mr. Corton today. Let me check. Okay, after wiggling the connections and going directly from the jumper battery to the terminals on the bike, I got a better connection. So that's a good sign. It turns over. I got a bad gas problem though, so <laughs> that sounded funny. Um, Hmm, okay. And we can check this thing for spark now that we're turning the engine over. It's faint, but it's there. You know what, it just dawned on me that this valve cover has rubber gaskets, so let me go right to this head bolt here. There's spark. Again, spark. So the CX-500 has a magneto ignition system that allows the engine to run even when you've got a dead battery. So, um, you know, it's a weak spark, but that's probably because we're turning the engine really slow. The flywheel spinning slow by the magneto, weak spark as things pick up, it should be better. Um, so we know we've got spark. Let's do a static check on the stator. Uh, that won't tell us everything about its health, but it will tell us something. So obviously I can't show you the stator inside the CX-500 engine right now, but I do have one. This is from my GS-550. Uh, my cafe racer project for those of you who've not seen that here's that bike um, there's a whole series on the build of this bike and of course I wrote a book and you can read about it there so this is a stator and it's essentially the same as what is inside of the CX 500 little different but you've got three circuits here there are three big circles of copper wire with an insulating shellac around them. These wires are not, you know, all shorted against each other. They are coated in the, th the most thin layer of uh, insulating, I call it shellac, but it's an insulation. And um, there's three phases to this thing and it generates uh, AC current or alternating current and, and quite a bit, like 70 volts or something uh, up to um, that is enough, of course, to fry your battery, so, and then an AC doesn't work with a DC system and a DC battery, so you have a regulator and rectifier also in the charging system that control, well, one, they take the AC power and change it to DC, and then, um, it regulates it down to a voltage that won't fry your battery. But what we can do is find out if the if there's a short in one of these three circuits inside the stator. On this Suzuki, you've got three different colored wires coming off of here. One is yellow, one's white with a green stripe, and the other is uh, white with a blue stripe. 
That's just how Suzuki does it. Honda does it with three yellow. And it really doesn't matter what order those three yellow are plugged in. But let me show you on the Honda. When we take off the seat on the Honda, there's some electrical plugs right under here. And this guy, interestingly, has three yellow wires coming to it. We are interested in this side of it, not this side, because this is the side coming from the stator, and I can tell because of the um, high temperature and higher gauge wire leads here. So let me get this unplugged so we can get access to those three leads with our voltmeter. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is put one contact to one terminal. I'm trying to do this so you can see it. Essentially, I've got three different circuits that I can do here. This pin to this pin, this pin to this pin, and this pin to this pin. I hope that makes sense. Let's just start with these two opposing. I've got about 1.7. Then if I go from this outer pin to this side, about 1.7, and then reverse that. 1.4, you know, close. Kind of the same thing. Little lower, but not bad. They should be relatively the same. They are. It doesn't matter that few decimal points between the 7 and the 1.4, 1.3. The other thing we need to test is each of these circuits to the ground. So I'll put one terminal here. Well, here, let me just ground one anywhere on the bike, preferably the engine. And then I'll touch each of these. Here I should get nothing. If I get a circuit, that's a problem. Nothing, and nothing. Just do that again just to make sure it wasn't me having problems. And I'll switch ground point to try something else, but... Oh. There I've got some flow. I should not. Hmm. There I have flow. And there I have some flow. I mean that, in theory, should tell me that every single one of the circuits is shorted to ground in this stator. And let's just go back to our Suzuki stator that I know is in good condition as an example. So each of these three leads, I'm going to circuit to ground, and I should get nothing on any of them. And I do not get anything. This one's hard to get it into. Hang on. There we go. Nothing. And if I test across these three leads, 1.4, 1.3, 1.4, 1.3, and 1.3. So, this is a good stator, and it would appear this one is not. So, I guess our previous owner had done her homework correctly. And uh, I'm going to plug this back in for now. Shoot. The engine is going to have to come out of this bike to repair that stator, which is what I signed up for. And on one level, I'm kind of happy about that because I wanted to share all of that with you guys on this channel. And I will do so. 
Um, and along the way then we'll get to repair some other things. There is something called the triple bypass and then on the GL1000, uh, which is the same engine but kind of a different configuration, they have something called the quadruple bypass and these are very common repairs to cam chain tensioner, stator, and uh, can't remember what the other one is right now. Anyways, we're going to address those things while we're in there and uh, I also should check compression on this bike but I gotta get those spark plugs out and I, I don't know how right now. I gotta get a wrench that fits in here. Anyways, hey if you guys like what I'm doing please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for to be notified when I put new videos up. It doesn't cost you anything and check out my book Creating Mr. Corton it's a memoir of growing up in Fargo, buying this very bike, I tell the story of it in here, and a memoir of the build of my GS550 Cafe Racer, which was a custom build. Um, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.